So I encountered this book a couple days ago and I quickly went through it. In amongst all the gay fiction that I've read, this one has got to be probably the most specific. It's not only gay, it's biker gangs, time travel, packs with the devil. This story starts off in 1805 with Laurent Mercier, who's a bit of a dandy, but not really. He's an indentured servant. And he's gay at a time when gay is just not a thing you do. Like, it can be quite dangerous to be gay at this time period. So he finds this guy named Fane, and Fane is seemingly into him. Laurent is quite into him in a way that you, you know, it's not going to end up well, you know? Laurent goes and has a, a bit of a secret tryst with this Fane guy in 1805. And just to give you a bit of description, Laurent is like, 5'7", he has unfashionably long hair, it's like wavy brown locks down to his shoulders, you know, very, uh, I would almost say Fabio-esque, except for he's considered quite uh, feminine almost. So he goes to have his secret tryst with Fane, and <laughs> ends up in uh, his secret sex torture dungeon. <laughs> It turns out that Fane is actually a serial killer because this is not only a gay time travel romance, beggar gang packed with the devil story. No, no, no. This is also a serial killer story. And Fane is actually, um, despite not showing up, my cats are fighting. The cat situation has been handled. So Laurent ends up in Fane's sex torture dungeon, and it turns out that he's killed before. Fane basically like locks him up, he puts a shackle on him and everything, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep you here, and I'm gonna like fuck you up and also fuck you, and you're gonna die. And Laurent is like, can't have that, ain't having none of that. So he takes a pair of scissors, and you know, it's, it's a pretty dramatic fight, but he ganks him. And Fane is dead. Laurent is like covered in blood. He's still trapped in a sex torture dungeon. He knows sex torture dungeon. So he knows that uh, Fane is a bit of nobility maybe. Like if not nobility, he is landed. He owns land, he's a property owner. And in 1805, I'm not sure if this is in France. I know Laurent is French, but I think he came to the US from France, and I think he's in Pennsylvania? Laurent is an indentured servant. Fane is landed. And back in the day, if you wound up in the sex torture dungeon of someone who is of a higher status than you, you better just die, you know? You better not fight back. Cause uh, it basically doesn't matter what they do. Anyone that has land and money uh, they're just better than you and they will kill you and they're allowed to kill you. So our boy takes Fane out and he's sitting there. He's bloodied. He has nowhere to go and the devil appears to him. He doesn't, he makes it a point to say, I'm not actually the devil as you know it. I am probably the devil, probably a demon. I, it's very unclear. He's definitely the devil though. He has like, you know, devilish horns and he's like got a very smoky appearance and like, you know, when he smiles, like his skin will crack and you'll see like hellfire or some shit underneath. Laurent is basically like, I will definitely make a pact with you uh, as long as I can go somewhere where I can be free to be me and live my own life in freedom. Basically, he wants to be out and gay and proud and not have anyone kill him for it. So the devil's like, I can do that. So the devil sends him to 2017 and Laurent winds up in the exact same place and it turns out that Fane's mansion that he had lived in got turned into an insane asylum and then it got turned into a biker club. So here we are, 2017. Laurent goes and is hiding and we are suddenly introduced to Beast. <laughs> okay, get this. This is not only a gay biker, time traveling, packed with the devil, serial killing, supernatural. No, no, no. This is also a Beauty and the Beast allegory, which is like, can you cram any more in there? One second. I think I can. Possible spoilers. By the way, spoilers. Everything is spoilers in this, so uh, be warned. Themes, time travel, servitude, serial killer, cruelty, motorcycle club, 
alternative lifestyles, disability, demons, tattoos, impossible choices, deception, crime, self-discovery, healing, virginity, mm, black magic, gothic. So <clears throat> they took they took everything but the kitchen sink and somehow made it okay. This wasn't bad. Uh, certainly not the best thing I've ever read, but not terrible, you know? It is 135,000 words. Book one can be read as a standalone. As of right now, I think there's like five, five installments. I am currently actually reading the second installment, which will sort of come into play because I think they plant seeds of the next book in every subsequent book, which, uh, you know, kudos to them. Beast. Beast is a character. He's a real character. And, uh, you know, the disability tag that comes in with Beast because Beast has been burned from mm, not head to toe, head to like torso ish. I think his lower legs are OK. He was burned in a fire trying to save someone. And so he was terribly disfigured and decided, you know what? F the people are that are going to look down on me. I'm going to tattoo my whole body. You know, he's trying to make a statement and everything, which is great. So he's a 6'4", Laurent is 5'7", which, you know, details. So he's a 6'4", tall, biker, scarred all over, terrible burn scars, tattooed all over. And this becomes a bit of a point of contention because as his romance develops with Laurent, he wants to do nice things for him and take him out. And society kind of looks a little down on biker gangs, you know, for obvious reasons. But this is not an ordinary biker gang. This is a sex and debauchery biker gang. So this isn't like, you know, Hell's Angels driving around, you know, selling drugs, prostituting people. This is more like uh, come to our wild parties and, you know, have sex out in public. You can be nude. You can do whatever. It's just a good time. This is actually plot relevant. At first I was like, what is this? Like you just have people boning in beds in front of everyone in a club. And I was like, people seem really okay with this in this world is like, I don't know, maybe I'm just a square. Is this a thing people actually like, I'm sure, I'm sure sex dungeon parties exist. They must. I'm just not in the lifestyle, I guess. Who would have guessed? So one of the other main characters that we come across is King. And King's a right bastard. King is the father of Beast. And he's like good looking, tall, you know, blonde, like everything that you would sort of almost expect from a main character, you know, that kind of suave, gentlemanly, you know, uh, he's not really suave and gentlemanly. He's pretty fine. And it turns out, major spoilers, I'm spoiling this whole book. It turns out that he is actually stealing the life force from Beast. He himself made a pact with the devil. Okay, <laughs> we've got multiple pacts with the devil going on here. He made a pact with the devil to be able to steal the life force from his son, but only if his son was miserable. So he has a very good reason to make sure that Beast is not happy. And when Laurent comes into Beast's life, Beast starts getting happy because now he's got, you know, this like kind of cute gay boy hanging around and everything. And I don't know, like the majority of the book the majority of the book is not incredibly plot heavy. The majority of the book is really Beast showing Laurent life in 2017 and Laurent being an absolute muffin. Laurent takes to 2017 quite well. You know, he enjoys plastic. That's his thing. Uh, he's uh, really into plastic. He's really into freedom. He's like open and accepting because he really wants to fit in. That's his thing. No one knows he's from the future. He kind of he doesn't lie but everyone sees this young man when he first appears they see this young man he's covered in blood he's obviously traumatized and so the bikers being very nice people decide we're not going to question this too much we're going to just give him some space and if he decides to tell us that's his prerogative so Laurent ends up spending most of his time with Beast just learning the ways of 2017 and slowly falling in love with him really so when Laurent made a pact with the devil his main goal was to keep King alive and keep Beast uh, in, in the house, in the biker club until his 33rd birthday. And 
Beast is 32 at the time we meet him and his birthday is kind of coming up quickly. And one of the main plot points is that Beast wants to move the club to some other location because I think like the club's falling apart, you know, it's been kind of, it's been around since 1805 at least and it hasn't seen too many resident renovations. It used to be an insane asylum. And he's like, this place is falling apart. I think that one of their guys got injured because someone went and shot a bullet up into the ceiling and the ceiling just kind of came down on him. Very unsafe, not up to code at all. So Beast is trying to make an effort to find them a new club. And Laurent has to essentially stop him by whatever means necessary. So this is, it's kind of like a give and take, tug and, tug and pull. Am I getting that metaphor right? Anyways. There's like a lot of like pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling between Beast who kind of wants like a very wholesome romance with this like cute French time traveler and Laurent who's, you know, made a pact with the literal devil to sort of keep Beast in the, in the clubhouse. One of the other main characters is Knight who, <laughs> he's a biker, but he's also part of the genealogy community in that he is, I think his name is actually Mercier too, which is the same as Laurent Mercier. And it turns out that Laurent is actually his great, great, great uncle. And he has this sort of obsession with clearing Laurent's name because Laurent got wrongfully accused of killing Thane because people didn't realize right away that he was a serial killer. And then history sort of remembers Laurent as stopping an evil serial killer, but there was not a whole lot of evidence to pin the murders on Fane. And it turns out that um, Fane had sort of bragged to Laurent about killing the bodies and where he left them. So in 2017, Laurent was actually able to go and dig up some of the bodies. And this is how he proves to Beast that he is in fact a time traveler when it comes time to prove that he is. Uh, so they go and dig up the bodies and it's quite adorable because Knight gets really excited about this and ends up contacting a, a historical society which ties into the next book because his story is all about his obsession with his online nemesis who's uh what do they call it a fane addict in this time they know that fane was a serial killer but he's kind of got fanboys because of it and a lot of people, you know, like over the course of a couple hundred years, they, the details get lost. And so people know the details in that Laurent Mercier killed Fane and Fane was a serial killer. But there are a group of people that are denying this and are basically saying, no, 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 these were all his like lovers in the past and they betrayed him somehow. And Fane's actually a really good guy. And here's Laurent who actually killed him and actually was in his sex torture dungeon. And he's sitting there like, no, no. So major spoilers for the end. So, you know, if you're as if I haven't already spoiled most of the book for you already, but if you're wanting to, to watch this or read this and uh, you don't want the ending spoiled, please turn away now. So the night of Beast's birthday, like the the night just before, a couple hours before, Laurent decides, I can't do this, I'm so in love, and I would rather Beast live than I live in 2017. And keep in mind, Laurent knows that he's going to be hanged. This is, uh, like he's already learned his own history in this regard, and history didn't look kindly upon him, and he was hanged for the crime of murdering Fane. So knowing this, Laurent actually tells Beast, uh, your father's sucking your life force, bro, and I made a deal with the devil, and you probably got to do something about this. Leave the clubhouse, flee, kill, kill King, whatever. So Laurent actually disappears in a bunch of smoke. Beast is horrified. He's, uh, he's losing energy because I think King is like sucking the life out of him. It was kind of unclear. So Beast is not in the best shape and he goes to find King. He like uh, suits up basically. He gets like a bunch of guns and stuff and King's waiting for him and he's looking fine. He's like, oh yeah, that dose of anguish, you know, is really, really giving me life force. So Beast goes and confronts his dad and kills his dad. And then the devil appears to him and Rather than saying, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the cycle, no devil, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not making a pact with you. You've been nothing but torture to my life. What does he do? He makes a pact with the friggin' devil. And his pact is that he wants Laurent to come back to him and for them to live in good health. And the devil's like, yeah, I can do that. So long as you keep having wild debauchery parties and sin in this clubhouse. And Beast is like, I can do sin. And he does. And it basically ends where he goes back into two, wait, 1805. And he rescues Laurent. He kills the guards that are, have caged Laurent because they're going to go take him to hang. And it's like, okay, I know these guys were kind of being like, let's, uh, let's make this guy suck our dick later. But it's like, I'm sure they had families. I'm sure they didn't deserve to die by the hands of a man from 2017, you know? Like, he's got a technical advantage over them. I just don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair. He takes Laurent back to 2017, and uh, they just continue to have wild debauchery parties, and Laurent settles into 2017 quite nicely. It must be said that Laurent didn't have a whole lot of problem settling into 2017, but at the same time, I bought it. Like, I didn't think the whole time that, oh, this guy's kind of having a too easy time of it. It just seemed more like this was this character's personality. And while he was amazed at things, he also knew he was in the future, so he knew to expect the unexpected. So it wasn't completely like, uh... I don't know. I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. It sort of ends on a happy note, but it sort of also ends on a cliffhanger because at the end you see Knight and he's kind of got this rivalry with this person called The Count, who's a fan addict. And um, The Count has this uh, YouTube channel where he basically discusses the topic of fame and uh, how he thinks he was innocent and how he thinks like Laurent Mercier was like a big old hoe and seduced him and brought his death upon himself or something like that. Knight is understandably like, how dare you smear the good name of my ancestor? Uh, and given that he, he also kind of uh, gets in on the whole time traveling bit. So he knows Laurent is actually his great, 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 great uncle, three times great uncle. And so he gets a little protective of his name. And so the next book is setting up his kind of uh, whirlwind romance with this guy named The Count and everything like that. So yeah, good series so far. Uh, hope, the, hope the next one's great. It seems like there's quite a few more installments in the series. So it'll be, uh, it'll be good to see where it goes from here. In conclusion, uh, pick this book up. It is by a team of women authors, I believe. Let me actually look up their names. K.A. American. Uh, and they seem to do a lot of other books. Uh, they seem to have some mafia books. I'm reading this on my phone here because I don't read paper books because I'm a, I'm a swine, you know? I've just moved completely. Ooh, On Your Knees Prospect. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of... There's a lot here. Um, they seem to mostly do bikers and mafia and dark stuff. Apparently they've got some lighter stuff. I haven't looked at their full library yet, but what I've read, I've enjoyed. Definitely don't go into this looking for, you know, Moby Dick, but if you're into gay time traveling, romance, this and that, you can't, I don't know, you can't go wrong. You really can't. And with that, I'm signing off. Have a good night.